see a few people, some of the people that I was hoping would be here today. Um, okay, so there were two, um, two things that I uh, just want to throw out there and uh, get a little bit of feedback from and get uh, there's, a, there's a phrase that Keller Williams uses a lot, which we call an, an aha, right? An aha is you, you hear a, a, a lecture or a message or a class or something like that, and you're taking notes and you're trying to, you know, internalize everything you've heard, and you're trying to, um, you know, kind of figure out, you know, what do I do after having experienced this, right? And a lot of us can kind of get caught up sometimes in, you um, like Aubrey says, like education without implementation is inter entertainment, right? So if you're just sitting in the room for an hour and hearing somebody talk and you leave and you take no action, then it probably wasn't all that helpful for you. And, and you could potentially say it was even a waste of time because you didn't do anything with it, right? So um, I'd love to hear, uh, number one, some feedback on Dustin's class from yesterday. Um, that was really well attended, and I know a number of you guys were there. And um, I also just wanted to uh, make myself available for a couple minutes um, to hear any feedback from yesterday's announcement or any questions uh, or concerns you might have about that. So let's start with Dustin. Who was in his class yesterday? And if you could tell me the most important thing you heard or what action step you plan on taking um, have, after having been there? I can start. Thank you. Well, I mean, the whole, the whole class was amazing. <laughs> so everything, um, I took a ton of notes, but I would say I walked away with probably like two big um, ahas per se. And it was getting a clarification of the objection versus the condition of why would uh -huh. some, you know, why would somebody not want to make an appointment? Um, and just learning that the condition that there's nothing you can do about it, like, you know, it's a graduation, a job relocation, but just make sure you stay in front of them. And, you know, you don't push them for the sale per se, but you stay in front of them. And that's the future, future follow up where the objection is something that can be, you know, you can do something about like if it's a repairs to a home or no home to go to. It's just a question that hasn't been answered that you can help them with. So I love that clarification. Yeah, I think that's really important. Let, let me let me try to summarize that. So a or maybe you could you could um, give us another example. But so it's it's basically a condition is something that there can, there's like no script that's going to solve that, right? It's like hey, the divorce decree says I need to do this at this time for this number, right? You can't you can't mess with that. Like you're not going to be able to outscript the divorce decree, right? Um, if they are not going to be, be making a move until somebody gets a, a promotion or somebody graduates or somebody is born or somebody dies or something like that, that, that is a condition. You're not going to be able to script them out of that. You just got to under make sure you clearly, clearly understand what they're experiencing. And then a great question to ask would be, you know, tell me a little bit about what, is there something that needs to happen at some point in the future that would change things? Like if, you know, in August, when your daughter graduates from college, is that when you would be ready to take action or does something else need to occur as well, right? So that you really understand their time frame. So that's a condition. An objection is like, I don't want to pay you 3%, right? They're not, they're still saying I'm motivated and I want to do this. They just don't want to pay you 3%. So that's something that you, you can uh, challenge them with uh, alternative thinking and scripts and objection handlers and that kind of stuff. Is that Mirinelli, did you have another example of something like that? Um, no, that was pretty much it um, because it's, I mean, it's just a great reminder, you know, like don't, don't push the conditions. There's nothing you can do there, you know, which is a good reminder there, but the objection um, uh, reasons, it's like, you can help them through that. And then he said, answer the objection in person. Don't do it on the phone, which I thought was great too. Um, like, we'll talk about that when we meet Thursday or Friday at five o'clock. <laughs> That'll yeah, be the first a, thing we talk about. <laughs> that's a great question. I'm, I'm very grateful that you brought that up. Um, uh, I'll record that right now. And that'll be the very first thing we talk about when we meet on Thursday. Yes. Right. So it is, again, that, that's, I'm glad you brought that up too, Marinelli. Um, 
guys, just get the appointment. You'll deal with all the stuff later. Okay. But if you try to defend every piece of your marketing plan and your commission and all that stuff over the telephone, you're never going to win. Just get the appointment. Okay. Um, okay, great. Who else wants to share something they learned yesterday? I'll share, Bill. All right, perfect. Um, I really think that, um, especially with dual career agents, um, you always talk about how um, sometimes you just have to delegate your responsibilities for things you just don't like to do or don't have time to do. Yeah. Um, the great opportunity, especially for the cost being at closing, um, to capitalize on... Um, to capitalize on actually being a real estate agent and not having to do a lot of the admin work behind the scenes. And um, especially for like newer agents, like what step am I missing? It's kind of like helping with those steps and being able to go back and just still make sure that you um, are understanding the facts um, of the process. But like I said, it's just relieving time. So I, I definitely like that a lot. Okay. You're, you're specifically talking about the, um, the, the leverage services with, with Andrew and his group, right? Awesome. Awesome. Um, okay. Anyone else want to share before we move forward? I'll share something. Um, yeah, please. I liked how he, so I, I'm still working on things, getting our systems ready, but like, I like how he said, you know, have the pre-listing package and have like extras in your car. Like you never know, um, like be prepared. And, um, so I'm trying to come up with mine or, you know, try to use some of the templates that he had, he had used um, yeah. and kind of make my own and get everything ready. So it's set like in the car, just grab it. And then you're set to go. I love that. I, I, and that reminds me, like, there's probably a number of things that you guys should have in your car as preparation, right? Uh, a blank listing agreement, a blank uh, buyer and buyer brokerage agreement. I know you guys, we can do it online and all that stuff. And if you get it, if you get an opportunity to get it signed, just get it signed and you can upload it to DocuSign later. That's equally as compliant. Okay. Um, you could have things in there like, you know, a flashlight, an extra umbrella, you know, some batteries. Like, I mean, it could be, uh, you know, any of that kind of thing where, you know, somebody there, there's a, a number of cultures, uh, particularly in our, in our local market, where, for example, the, the family wants the house to face a certain way or not to face a certain way, right? So, you know, maybe you have a compass in the car or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of little things like that, that the more you're prepared, the more professional you appear, right? Maybe some extra waters or, you know, an extra pair of shoes if they get wet or muddy. I mean, it could be anything. Cool. Anyone else? All right, beautiful. Um, so thank you very much for, uh, for popping in today. Um, you should have gotten an email yesterday um, from Andrew, just kind of going through the, uh, the, the, the price schedule um, again and uh, him uh, putting out that kind of you know, sign-in page where you can uh, begin your, your relationship with him and learn a little bit more about how he can help you individually. Okay, let's talk for a second about the next week in our um, in our uh, uh, eight-week plan, which is week six. Okay, we'll see how much of this we get to today. So week six, I said, is scripts and presentations. Okay, scripts and presentations. Now, if we were to reduce our job to something very, very simple, I would say your job is to know what to say to get the appointment and what to say when you're on the appointment, right? So let's just be real simple about it. You got to know how to get the appointment, what to say to get the appointment, and what to say when you're on the appointment. So what to say when you get the appointment, the, the kind of overarching idea for that is it's, it's really just a bunch of questions, right? What are the typical questions that you ask to a prospective buyer, to a prospective investor or renter or seller, right? You've, you have the, the buyer intake sheet from the Google Drive or the seller intake sheet from Google Drive or both, right? You got a stack of those at your desk, which is just a fabulous, like another example of being prepared, right? You never know when a phone call is going to go from a casual catch-up call to a, ooh, I might be on the phone with a ready, willing, and able seller. Am I prepared to ask the appropriate questions in the right order? Oh, let me just reach over and grab a seller intake sheet. See what I'm saying? 
Um, so everything prior to the appointment or your ability to earn the appointment is going to be um, uh, mostly just questions, right? Learning about their motivation, learning about their time frame, learning about what they like about uh, uh, choosing a realtor, what they don't like, these kind of things. And then the overarching idea of what to do when you're on the appointment is going to be a combination of the presentations themselves, which should be incredibly highly planned and dealing with objections, right? And, and so how do you handle the, my sister's a realtor? How do you handle the, I don't wanna pay you 3%. How do you handle, I'm gonna work with the same agent I just worked with. How do you handle, um, you know, I don't wanna, uh, you know, fix up the home or whatever, or, you know, I don't want to put a, a lockbox on the house, or I don't want to leave the house when the, uh, when the buyers are coming, you know, any of these things that we know as real estate agents are just not smart strategies, you know, how, how do we, um, uh, without being, you know, blunt and, 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 and borderline rude, how do we finesse that and teach our prospect how to be more successful? Make sense? Okay, so I want you to think to yourself right now, let's just take some your temperature and say, hey, how do I feel on a scale of one to 10 on my buyer presentation? How do I feel on a scale of one to 10 on my seller presentation? Okay, I'm sure there's some people in the room today that don't feel that good, right? Or know that there's space for improvement. So you should say to yourself, I gotta get better at this because I, I, I can never actually have a closing unless I have a listing. I can never get a listing unless I have an appointment for a listing. And I'm never going to get an appointment for a listing unless I have a conversation with the listing and ask the right questions, right? So we got to go back and say, how am I going to prepare myself? I'm so glad that that's a, I'm so glad you, you, you said all that this morning, Fabiola, because that, that's a very nice segue to what we're talking about today. This is preparation, right? Let's not, the, as we can tell, guys, our, our, our ready, willing, and able and cooperative buyers and sellers particularly easy to find in this market? No, they're really not, particularly sellers, right? So do you want to practice all this stuff on the man or woman that you just spent month, months getting the opportunity to, you know, massage that relationship so that you could ultimately get an appointment? And then you're going to come in there and botch the appointment because you never practiced it, right? Do you want to practice on your prospects or do you want to practice with your accountability partner so when the game is on, you already know how to play. Make sense? I want you to think about, um, let's talk about presentations for a second, okay? I, I've used this analogy a number of times, but you guys ever watch TV with uh, closed captioning on? Right? And it's like, you know, strong winds, you know, it, you know, it says like, you know, telephone rings in the background or door slams shut or something like that. Like it, that is, that is part of the of the story, if you will, right? So that is something that the writers felt was necessary to paint the entire picture, right? So you should be adopting that type of mindset when you go into, let's say, a seller presentation, right? You want to know at which point do you want to walk the house, right? What are the order of the questions I'm going to ask, right? Um, you know, how do I transition from one stage of the appointment to the next stage of the appointment? How do I transition from the end of the appointment to asking for the opportunity, right? How do I say something to the effect of the next thing will happen is, the next thing that we'll do together is, right? I will do this at this amount of time. I will follow up with you in the following way, right? You're practicing all of that stuff so it naturally comes out. I was speaking with um, Travis and, and Chris and, and Kimo for a second yesterday, um, in, in the big room, and we kind of talked about this idea of if you don't know what to say in these situations, then I want you to think about it this way. Your customer is speaking to you. They're answering a question or they're expressing a, um, a thought or an opinion or something like that. And what you're doing as a unprepared realtor, realtor is thinking about what you're going to say. And when you're thinking about what you're going to say or how you're going to reply, you know what you can't do? You're, you're pretty much a crappy listener, right? And if you're not that good at listening, you're going to be even worse at responding, right? Because you're not going to pick up the nuances of what they've said, or sometimes more importantly, what they did not say. Make sense? So if you guys are not a 10 across the board, 
then there should be time on your calendar every single day where you are intentional about being more prepared for these conversations and more prepared for these appointments. So even if you print out the listing agreement and you scan through it um, you know, for 10 minutes a day, or you print out the list of objections and you read through it every single day, or you look at the buyer intake sheet and you practice saying those questions and internalizing them, um, it, it, you're just not gonna perform at the level you're capable of performing at. Is that fair to say? Okay, so let's, um, let's talk specifically about how this gets done, okay? So the first thing I would do is go to the um, scripts folder within the Just PC file, okay? Does everyone have access to this file? Is there anybody that does not have access to this file? You should because of the weekly emails and, and all of that. So it's, it's called Just PC and you go down to the script book or script file. Um, there, there are a ton of scripts in the script file, okay? So I would encourage you to um, read them, right? 40, uh, 40 real estate objections handled, handling objections workbook page, FISBO scripts formatted, buyer script and intake page, the pivot script book, the circle prospecting favorites, the expired favorites, the business to business scripts, right? Um, the thank you to a co-op agent scripts, um, agent pivot scripts, this down here is um, a script book that KW came out with last year with respect to COVID, right? When people are, you know, nervous about going out in public or interacting with people, you know, closely or having appointments in, in people's houses and that kind of stuff, right? So I would encourage you to get really familiar with these scripts. Probably my favorite one is this, and I will um, put it in the chat right now. Um, it's from a, a company called The Locker Room. Um, so I'm going to post that here in the chat in just a moment. So the idea is, again, we need to focus on what, what skills and scripts do we need to familiarize yourself to get the appointment? And then what do we need to do when we're on the appointment? Does that make sense? Any questions thus far? Okay. You broke up on your you broke up on your favorite script. I couldn't hear it. What did you say your favorite one was? Um, my favorite script book is the one I just posted in the announcements page. It's called um, TLR, which stands for the Locker Room Script Booklet. Okay, it's got a little bit of everything in there. Um, it's got open house scripts and and FISBO scripts and you know all kinds of stuff. And is that one in? Is that one in the drive or is that separate? It's both in the drive and I just posted it. You see it, the locker or TLR script booklet? Yeah, it's there. I'm looking yeah. at it right now. Yeah, me too. Let's okay, see. So, uh, TLR, but uh, I did just post it in the WhatsApp chat, so you can grab it from there if, you, if you're having trouble. Okay. Yeah. Um, so take a look at these and really start to internalize some of the typical conversation that you're going to have with prospects. Okay, make sense? All right, let me give you a little note on scripts in general, okay? Um, Keller Williams is uh, is kind of making a, a, an effort um, to remove the phrase scripts and turn it into conversations, right? Scripts feels a little sterile. It feels a little premeditated, right? It feels salesy. Yeah. In reality, this is just conversations, guys. We're just asking questions, listening, asking another question, listening sharing a piece of value, you know, asking what they think, handling an objection, getting the paperwork signed. It's just conversations, right? Now, I will tell you though, these were written primarily by psycholo psychologists, okay? As we've learned from being in this group and elsewhere, um, Don and I were talking about this earlier this morning, like real estate is all psychology, right? How you phrase certain things, what you say, what you choose not to say, how much time you wait to say it, it's all psychology, right? And so it's really important um, that uh, there's a script book in here, for example, called behavioral based scripts, right? So if you know you're talking to a certain type of person, you can say certain things. And the scripts, for example, are tailored to appeal to people of a variety of personality profiles, right? So for example, the script book for, or the script for the listing consultation, 
I'll give you two examples. When you walk to the door, and let's say you have a four o'clock appointment, you say, hey, Mr. You know, knock on the door, take a couple steps back, customer opens the door, say, hey, Mr. Jones, I'm, you know, Bill Linkwald here, it's four o'clock, and we had a four o'clock appointment. May I come in? And you're like, why would I do that? The reason why you do it is because a significant part of the population are high Ds, and they don't want to waste time. And because the vast majority of real estate agents are constantly late. And so if they're interviewing other agents, you stand out from the crowd, right? And subconsciously, you're appealing to that guy. I mean, I'm a high D. If somebody shows up at my door that wants my business and the guy's late and he's got a crappy excuse for it, he's already off on, I'm already like considering not cutting the meeting short, right? But if they're on time, then especially if they remind me they're on time, ooh, now, now, we're, now everything is, we started off pr properly, right? There's another phrase in the listing agreement or listing um, appointment that says something like, um, you know, there's three uh, results that could come from our meeting today. One is I will choose, or um, you will choose to hire me. The second is you will choose to not hire me. And the third is I will choose not to work with you or not to um, you know, enter into an agreement with you. And a high I whose natural personality is to be loved, they don't want anyone to say that, you know, I wanna be your friend, I don't wanna not be your friend. They're like, wait, 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 why would, why would you not wanna work with me, right? And so that catches that type of personality. So if you look at a part of a script and you say, eh, it doesn't feel like me, just say it anyway, it's there for a reason, okay? The more you say it, the more comfortable it'll be. Every script that I looked at, you know, many years ago and said, eh, I don't like the way that sounds. I think I'll skip over that. I've come later on to realize how important it was for it to be in there. Okay, so just trust me on that. Okay, it's there for a reason. Everyone clear on that? Okay, beautiful. So, um, so I want you to take some time to scan through this list. So the one um, script that I'll take a, an extra couple minutes with you guys with today, this is a script that can be used pretty much anywhere. This could be used on the telephone. This could be used at an open house. This could be used at the grocery store. This could be used at a business to business interaction. There's some business to business scripts in there too, by the way. Um, the first question is that we've called this the three ask before. So have you or your family thought about making a move recently? Right. Gosh, with all the homes, there's hardly any homes on the market. They're selling so fast. They're selling at record prices. Have you were, you know, your family considered a move recently? Okay. Question number one. Second question. Do you happen to know any neighbors or someone from church or work that are that we could be helping with their real estate needs? Right. You can use the word we instead of I because you have it, you have a team, right? You have a you have a coach, you have a bunch of peers. You have a leadership council, assistant team leader, a team leader, a lender, an attorney. Um, now we have a kick-ass admin. I was about to say, exactly. Right, you guys have a team, right? You're not doing it all yourself, right? You have a team, okay? Um, so, you know, do you happen to know any, anyone from, any neighbors or anyone from church or work that we could be helping with their real estate needs today, okay? And then the third question is, when you think about real estate, who, who do you trust? And stop talking for a moment, right? And then they'll say, oh, well, we don't have a real estate agent. Or they'll say, well, I, you know, that woman we helped us a year ago, I don't know if I'd say I'd trust her, right? Or I don't know if I'd work, use her again. Or if they hesitate at all, they're like, uh, 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 uh. hey, honey, who is that realtor? What was her name? Right? That's a good indication that it's not a great relationship. Most likely because that real estate agent is not following up properly, just as a sidebar, right? But if you ask this question, you're figuring it out, figuring out what it will take to be their realtor of choice, right? Oh, we don't have a realtor that we trust. Well, listen, Ryan, I would love an opportunity to earn that responsibility, right? Um, would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you periodically just to let you know what's going on in your neighborhood or in the marketplace in general? And if you need anything at any time, you just give me a call. Would that be okay? Sure. Do you happen to have any questions today while I got you on the phone? No. Wonderful. 
you know, and then you move on to the next call. So you can ask these questions in any setting, right? And you're going to quickly identify, do they have a real estate need? Do they know somebody who has a real estate need? Or um, is there an opportunity for you to become their partner? Make sense? Any questions on that? Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of mechanically how this is going to happen. You're going to review all of these scripts. You're going to determine which ones make the most sense and which ones you want to get uh, um, uh, particular practice on or that you intend to use. Okay, so you're going to print them, you're going to organize them, right? And you're going to put them up. I don't know if you guys have seen Trent's office, Trent's um, space in the market center. He literally has scripts all around him. Okay, and when he's calling, he's he's looking at scripts, right? He's on the phone. He's he's generally standing up. We tend to have more energy when we're standing up, right? So he's standing up, he's making these calls and he knows exactly like, let's say he's calling expired. So he'll stand up against this wall or he knows he's checking in with past internet leads. And these are the scripts that those people need to hear. So he's facing that direction. You see what I'm saying? So how is it that you can remind yourself of the things that you're gonna say the most often, right? We have an agent, uh, Marie Burgess, for example, who, um, used to have this little square thing on her phone that said, um, the next thing that will happen is, and she knew because she's been in real estate forever and because she's been in coaching that that's a great comment to say, at, particularly in transaction with somebody, right? Um, hey, the next thing that's gonna happen is uh, the appraiser is gonna come over and then they're gonna send over a report and we'll talk about that. Right. The next thing that's going to happen is the closing attorney is going to send you an information sheet and ask you to fill it out. Right. So you're always guiding them on the next thing that's going to happen so that they feel prepared and they feel informed and they feel protected. Make sense. So she knew, knew that that was important to say. She put it right there on her phone. So if she was going to hang up the phone, she's like, oh, hey, the next thing that's going to happen is. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense? OK. Um, we need to come up most likely with a study schedule, right? So when are you going to intentionally get better at your presentations and intentionally get better and more comfortable with your scripts? So my recommendation is you find a time that makes sense for you and put it on your calendar and respect your calendar, right? Um, you may need or benefit from a um, a, a role play partner that I, I'm actually, the two of you are both on the call today. Uh, Donna and Ebony have been role play partners for over a year. Does either of you want to speak to how much confidence you have after having all that practice? Yesterday, Donna and I were script practicing and she blew me away to whereas I felt a little intimidated because I'm seeing the growth in both of us but it's just like 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 you said it's not script practice it's conversations right. you know that you're having and it is it, it's showing you know so it's just like we both know and we're always on the same page like if we're on a script for a little too long we're like okay well what's the next thing that we want to do in our business and that's the script that we automatically start focusing on so it, it, it's done wonders and it helps my confidence a lot. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Donna, any, anything you want to add? No, she's, she's by her phone. Right? Okay. Um, thank you for sharing that, Ebony. So do you have a role play partner? Right? If you do not have a role play partner and you'd like one, um, uh, put, put a message into the, into the WhatsApp and say, hey, I'm looking for a role play partner. I've identified the following time that works for me and my family. I'd like to role play scripts from 7.30 to eight o'clock every morning. Who's interested in being my partner on a Monday? Okay, and guys, that's one solution. Is it possible? Let me give you an, an, an idea. What if you went on to KW Command or uh, Lab Code Agents or one of those kind of places where these are both Facebook groups that have thousands and thousands of people in them. And you said, hey, I'm looking for a role play partner uh, 7.30 to 8 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then 
somebody from Chicago said, oh, I want to be a role play partner. And then somebody from, and you, that was Wednesday. And then somebody from, you know, I don't know, San Diego um, says, oh, I want to do, you know, Thursday. So now you've built relationships with other agents in other cities that could potentially have clients that want to move to Atlanta. And if somebody's committed to role play, they're committed to their business. You see what I'm saying? So now you've, you've, you've identified several agents that can be part of your sales force. I definitely want to speak on that. You want to, is that a good idea or you've done that in the past or what? Yeah. So I joined this group. It was, just like, it's a scripts group. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's on Facebook and it's a group basically where you go over, oh, it's called scripts and objections. You go over scripts and objections and that's all agents from all over the U.S. talk about. And I asked like, who can role play with me? And this guy, Richard Pollard was like, I'll do it. So he's calling me every day at like 8 a.m. and we're doing scripts for like 30 minutes. Well, we became good friends and we, we actually still really good friends. Now it's been like a year and a half. He ended up bringing me back to KW because I was at KW in 2016. Yeah. He ended up by having, he, he just was so confident and just so helpful. And he reached out to me every day and he ended up bringing me back to KW now. Um, but he's a, he used to live in Norcross, but he lives in South Carolina now. So he was helping me for free from Oakland all the way from South Carolina every day even when I wasn't with KW, giving me advice and then brought me back to KW. And he's like, listen, I'm from Atlanta. I know a lot of people in Atlanta. I have a ton of leads I can give to you at any time, as long as you're ready and business minded. So it's definitely a good idea to reach out to these people in these other groups, even if they're out of state, because they can send you leads all the time. And even, especially like he, he just happens to be from here. Yep. So I'm a hundred percent for it. Yeah, I mean, that is amazing. There, you, you could script practice for 15 minutes. Um, you know, I go from my Seattle guy, I, I'm not currently doing this just for full disclosure, but hey, my Seattle guy, I go from 7.15 to 7.30. My uh, Las Vegas guy, I go from 7.30 to 7.45. My Seattle or my Boston guy, I go from 8 to 8.15. I mean, there's, the more people you know, the more opportunities will come your way. You see what I'm saying? It's that simple. That's incredible, Lakira. Thank you for sharing that. Um, all right, Donna, I think you were away from your computer a second ago, but um, we, we uh, uh, reminded everyone that you and Ebony have been role play partners or script practice partners for probably a year. Can, can you comment on what that's done for, for you and your confidence in your business? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, when we, when we role play now, um, it's like, it's so natural and we are starting to incorporate different things that we um, talk about that might come up during a conversation with um, you know, a prospect. So we're just becoming more and more comfortable. We're um, incorporating tools like, like Knock and Homeward and Ribbon and um, it just gives us much more confidence and we feel comfortable. Um, and it just sounds really natural. And the same thing with Michael. Michael and I started um, script practicing during um, the last bold, and we're picking that up again. Um, so it's just helpful, even to have more than one script partner. And just, let me just give one more uh, thought on script partners. Now, I'm, this is going to sound a little raw. I understand that. I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. If you agree to be somebody's script practice partner, just commit to it, okay? Don't don't like say, oh, let's do eight o'clock on Monday. And then the next Monday, oh my my my, you know, I gotta take my kid to school. The next Monday, it's like, oh, somebody's sick. Oh, the next Monday, I gotta go to the dentist. Like you lose momentum right away. And if you agree to be a script practice partner for somebody, you you now are a part of their plan, right? You're responsible in part for some of their success and vice versa. So take that commitment super, super seriously. Okay. If you can't be a great partner for somebody, don't agree to be their partner. Don't let them down. Okay. Don't let them down. Um, I just want to say one, one quick thing about Donna. I, we had a nice conversation last night about a, a file and um, she put a new listing on the, can I share this Donna? It's all positive. I didn't think you'd have a problem with it. Oh no, you can go ahead. Okay. 
So I promise no negative stuff. Okay, so um, Donna Pillow. No, I want to hear the negative too because that's how we learn. So I, I said that just so she'd say that. That's the truth. She she hasn't done anything negative. Um, uh, so she has a listing. She put on the market. She got two offers, both of which are over market over asking price. And we were kind of going through some of the details of each of the offers to determine, you know, what was the, you know, what were the differences, right? Which offer was more uh, appealing or, you know, ways to explain that to her client, et cetera. And um, what she did is she went in to the last like three or four sales in that community, because one of the biggest topics we were having is the appraisal, right? The appraisal gap, how long the appraisal contingency was, all that stuff, right? And so she actually went way above and beyond what I would expect an agent to do and called the buyer's agents of the last handful of sales in that community and just straight up asked them, hey, what did the home appraise for? Right? So that she could identify like how important would an appraisal gap be, right? Or how high can we push this, right? You see what I'm saying? So the more, as I told her yesterday, your job is to help gather all the information necessary for your client to make the best decision. Okay. And sometimes that is calling a buyer's agent from a transaction previously that previously closed and saying, hey, do you have any issue with the HOA? Hey, do you have any issue with the appraisal? Whatever it may be, so that you can be more and more prepared to handle those conflicts if and when they come up in your transaction. So, I just want to publicly um, give you some some kudos for that. That I was super impressed. Thank you. I Bill. also call pendings that are about to close. Yeah. Should be past that appraisal point, and I'll ask them. You know, hey, I have a listing coming up in the area. Um, do you mind telling me we're in no competition with you? But do you mind telling me what you guys ended up winning the deal for? Yeah. Oh, really? Did you guys get any closing costs, or are you paying it all yourself? And then if they're past the point, I'll say, did the appraisal come back at that? <clears throat> so I could try to gather as much information as possible, even from pendings. Great point. And, and, and really agents are a lot, particularly listing agents are a lot more open to sharing that information. Do you know why? First of all, because most of the time it's above list price. So they're not like giving anything away really, right? If the home was listed for 300, let's say, and it went under contract. And this was, let's say, I don't know, four years ago when hardly anything was going above list price. And let's say they agreed to a price of, I don't know, 290. They should be reluctant to tell me 290 because if that deal dies, then I now know that that seller is willing to take 290. So I would never give them anything above 290. Does that make sense? So you got to be really careful as you're answering those questions. But as a listing agent today, the vast majority of these listings are going for, for under contract above list price. And you know how realtors, they all want, with all due respect, I'm a realtor too. We want a little recognition. We're proud of our accomplishments, right? And so they'll be like, yeah, yeah, we got $10,000 above list price, right? So they're a lot more open to sharing their results now prior to they, when they should. Does that make sense? So make sure you're, nothing wrong with asking the question. Fair enough? Okay. Um, so in summary, if you do not have a, um, a role play partner and you desire to be successful in this business at the highest level possible, you're going to need to get familiar with what you say, okay, and how you say it. Um, and so I would encourage you to uh, take some initiative, get a partner, put it on the schedule and take it seriously, okay? I heard recently, I, I think I mentioned in here once, but um, if you were to take your calendar and let's just say, for example, you have a perfect calendar. It represents all of your non-real estate goals, all of your time off, all of your real estate goals. It is perfect for your plan. The percentage of the time you hold that calendar will probably be very close to the percentage of your goals that you reach. So if I've got a, cal if I've got a calendar that should perfectly allow me to make 200 grand and I follow 60% of that calendar, I'll probably make 60% of 200 grand. Make sense? So be sticklers. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is the buyer and seller presentation. Okay, so we've done a number of buyer and seller presentations um, in the group, and those are all recorded and on the YouTube channel. Um, in the PC uh, resource page, which we have a link to in the, uh, the weekly email, 
there at the towards the bottom there's uh it says like seller um qualification and checklist seller presentation and seller listing agreement and then same thing for buyer so it's they're very quick or very easy to find those links and to review those processes and dustin went through a bunch of it yesterday too there's also dustin's listing presentation that he did a couple of weeks ago um, is also on the youtube channel so you can see exactly how to the kind of the flow and just as i've said many times in here if you go ask 100 real estate agents to hey, show me your listing presentation you're probably going to get 80 different listing presentations so i don't want to make you feel like it's got to be done a certain way but the ones that you hear, the phraseology that you hear most common, right? Things like what I just said, hey, it's four o'clock and, you know, we had an appointment at four o'clock. Can I come in? Right. So that I can see your home through the eyes of buyer. I'd like to take a quick minute to look around your house. Would that be OK? I'll meet you at the kitchen table. OK, our plan for today is this, this and this. My goal for that is this and this and this. Um, you know, we're going to do this, then this, then this. It's all it's all sorted out. Does that make sense? It's all pre-planned. So, um, if you have some questions about, you know, the process or the order or anything like that, obviously you can reach out to us. Um, but take some time to review the, the the videos and to make sure that you are super clear on some of the most important points. Now, I will say I probably should not have used the um, phrase presentation, um, and and I'll, we'll kind of end on this idea, which is a presentation implies like michael you sit there and listen to me while i talk at you right and it's not like it doesn't feel like a partnership right a consultation is different a consultation implies that i'm pretty much just going to ask you a bunch of questions so that i can determine your level of motivation so I can determine your financial wherewithal, so that I can determine your uh, your sticking points, basically, like what's the most important thing that can happen in this transaction in order for you to consider it a, a five-star experience, right? You should be asking that question every single time you sit down with the prospect. Hey, what's the most important thing that would need to happen in this transaction for you to feel like it's a five-plus experience or five-star experience or 10-plus experience or something like that? Oh, uh, well, the one thing that needs to happen is I need great communication. Okay, great. So great. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, great communication means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Can you share with it with me what it means to you? Is great communication we talk on the hour every hour? Or is great communication we talk once a week? Or is great communication is we talk once a month? What is great communication to you? I want to make sure I'm perfectly clear on that. By the way, do you prefer to um, be notified of things by text or email or telephone? What's the most appropriate way to communicate with you? Now, when you're asking that question, what we're not saying is we're, we're using assumptive language that basically says, as we're working together through the task of selling your home chemo, what's the best way you'd like to be communicated with? Right? So you're assuming that the relationship is, 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 is getting solidified, right? Like, oh yeah, chemo, I expect, I, I want emails. So they're already telling you how to service them, right? So the majority of the time, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb. I know there's a lot of first-time home buyers out there, but um, there's a chance that they've maybe interacted with realtors as well. You might say something to the degree, the degree of, um, um, so can you share with me some examples of uh, experiences that you've had in the past with realtors that you really enjoyed? Right. Could you share with me a couple of examples of experiences with realtors in the past that you've had of things you did not enjoy? Right. Again, you're basically saying, how do I serve you? What do you expect? And then what you ought to be considering is, and this is also going to come off a little raw, I understand. Um, am I willing to commit to a certain day and time to meet with this person based on everything I've learned about them, which mandates that I cannot spend that exact time with my family and I cannot spend that exact time with other prospects or finding other prospects. What I'm saying is, is this appointment worth it, right? So that's what you should be confirming, right? So if somebody says, well, you know, I expect uh, every time that you need to give me some news, I expect you to come to my house and give it to me right? 
or I want to talk on the hour every hour, whether we have news to talk about or not. Right. Or I want you to be available 24 seven. OK, well, I'm probably not your guy and I'm totally cool with that. Right. I once had one guy, he messaged me. We were in the we were courting each other for a listing and uh, he messaged me. Um, he was way far away from taking action like this was not an emergency by any stretch of the imagination. OK, he messages me at like 730 at night, put my kids to bed and he knows my he was actually kind of a friend. And he knows I'm putting my kids to bed at that time. And I said, um, hey, uh, I'll probably tied up for another 30 minutes or so. I'll call you in 30 minutes. When I got on the phone with him 30 minutes later, he started chewing me out about the fact that I wasn't available to him exactly at the moment he needed me. And I said to him, I said, I got to be honest with you. I don't think we're a good match. I wish you the best. And unfortunately, that's the last time we spoke, but I don't really want to be friends with people that speak that way to me. Right. And that's OK. There's eight billion people in the world I can help. Now, I, I suppose there's seven billion nine hundred ninety nine thousand or whatever. You see what I'm saying? I'm OK with that. I ain't got to help everyone. Right. I've, I've earned the right to be selective in my clients. By the way, I think you guys have too. Chemo, even you, you've been in the business a week. Don't, don't put up with rude people. You don't have to. There's enough people. Okay. Um, any, any ahas from any of the stuff I've talked about today? Okay. Um, so again, a lot of these uh, presentations, if you will, they're, they're just dialogues. They're, we're, we're trying to figure out how to service this person. Then we give them the data we need or they need to make a decision. Then we ask for the business, right? A appointment from a tracking perspective is you give them a needs analysis or you have a needs analysis and then you have a closing, right? Whether they sign or not, I don't care, but you close. Hey, it sounds like we're gonna have a lot of fun together and I'm really excited to help you sell your home in Roswell and move to Smyrna so your kid can get in the right school district. You ready to get started? No, I'm not ready to get started. Oh, okay. So is there something that you were hoping I would say that I didn't say, or was, was there another topic you wanna to discuss before we get started? Yeah, we haven't talked about um, showing, so I'm not sure I'm ready to move forward. Oh, okay, what, what kind of questions do you have about showings? Is there something in particular that you want to take place or you want not to take place? Tell me a little bit more about that. Right. By the way, when everyone, when anyone asks a question that appears to be potentially vague, ask them again. So if they say, I want a big backyard, say, awesome. Um, just so I'm, I'm, I'm clear, a big backyard means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So what does a big backyard mean to you? Right. Don't ask them, why do you need a big backyard? Because then they get defensive and they say, well, because I want one. Right. But if you say, what about having a big backyard is important to you? That's a whole different question. You all hear that? So generally speaking, why questions are not good? Because the listener hears, why do I have to defend myself to you? Right? Why do you want to live in Roswell? How does that sound? Right? What, in, what about living in Roswell is important to you and your family? Oh, because the restaurants are great. The schools are great. I love the park, blah, blah, blah. One question kind of like, you know, kind of stops the energy and one question, you know, totally expands it. You, you hear what I'm saying? So um, you want to ask questions. I forgot where I was for a second. Like if the, if the, pro, oh, the backyard thing, right? Um, if you grew up in Manhattan, you know, a 20 by 20 backyard is like paradise. If you grew up on a farm, a 20 by 20 backyard is not big enough, right? So everything me could mean different things to different people. Thank you, Greta. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, uh, Y'all hear that? So anything when somebody says, I want an open floor plan. Awesome. I love open floor plans. Can you kind of describe what an open floor plan means to you? Does that mean like the kitchen is open to the family room? Does that mean that 
uh, you have two, you know, multi-story foyer or multi-story family room, you know, what would be an example of that, right? And then if they say, hey, I want a home where their kitchen opens to the family room, don't take them to homes that don't have that. You're wasting their time and you're wasting your time and you're proving that you're not even listening. You follow me? I have a question about that. Okay. Some homes, you can't really tell what they look like just by the pictures. So are you really going out and previewing every home before you take them? Um, probably not. I mean, as you certainly could, but I'd call the buyer or the listing agent and say, hey, my buyer is only interested in homes where they have a two-story family room. And it's a little hard to tell from your picture whether it's a two-story family room. Is it a two-story family room? Got you. <laughs> right. Um, or, you know, hey, my client is only interested in, in homes that have a basement with a daylight basement. So is there a door in the basement that I can open and I'll be on level ground? No? Okay, thank you so much. Now you don't have to sit in traffic. Now you don't have to go preview it. Now you don't have to show it to the buyer. The home has been eliminated. There you go. That makes sense. Right. And so every, by the way, we haven't talked about this much, but every property that you show a buyer one of two things, you need to figure out one of two things. Are you interested in buying this home? If the answer is yes, then you probably move forward and go to the offer stage. If the answer is no, I want to know why. Not because I'm like trying to push you, but what did you see or not see that's causing you not to be interested? Because I don't want to take you to a home. If, if for example, um, you know, they want a dining room and living room that are, you know, kind of combined that lead into each other, as opposed to like one being on one side of the entry foyer and one being on the other side, then tell me so I don't take you to any more of these things. You see what I'm saying? So I either want you to buy it or I want to know very clearly why you're not interested in buying it. Does that make sense? Okay. Any thoughts, questions, comments, feedback, complaints, anything on what we've studied today? Okay, if you have any trouble trying to figure out what scripts are the best or what scripts are to use or whatever, just let me know and I'll, I'll walk you through it, okay? Um, but whatever you study, like study some objections, study some buyer presentation scripts, study some buyer pre-qualification scripts. You know, you, you wanna get super, super familiar with questions that you could ask anyone at any place, right? Hey, have you lived here long? What's your favorite part about living here? Hey, what's your favorite restaurant? Hey, what do your kids think about the school district? You know, any of these open-ended questions can be asked at any place. They could be asked at the yoga studio. They could be asked at the grocery store. They could be asked at the doctor's office. It doesn't make a difference. You're just having conversations with people. People love to talk. Let them talk. Make sense? All right, guys. I appreciate your time today, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Bill.